It's time for another Ultrasound of the Week. I'm Dr. Michael Schick. This week we have a 60-month-old female who came in short of breath. Overall looked pretty well, but was tachypneic, tachycardic, not hypoxic. We noticed some subdiaphragmatic retractions, and on auscultation there was a bit of a scattered wheeze bilateral lung fields. In this pediatric age group, the differential diagnosis for shortness of breath is broad. Now, most of them will have a pulmonary source, such as bronchiolitis or pneumonia, but could also be cardiac, hematologic, metabolic, or infectious. As I launched into this very conversation with my residents, we talked about how this patient probably had bronchiolitis, but how could we narrow the differential from this very broad one we had in front of us? And we talked about the various diagnostics and physical exam findings that would help us. And one of those things can be a point-of-care ultrasound. We start, as I often do, with a parasternal long axis. In this axis, we saw great cardiac contractility, normal ejection fraction. I really didn't think this patient was in heart failure. Also, no uh, obvious valve issues going on. All the chambers seem appropriately sized. There are no signs of tamponade. However, two things really drew my eye. One is that there's a very small pericardial effusion that I could see just in this area highlighted. And I didn't think this was anything to really worry about, although we did consider pericarditis and myocarditis, and we got an EKG and troponin, which were both unremarkable. The other thing that really caught our eye was this extra cardiac mass. And immediately, I didn't really know what this was, but the possibilities that popped up in my mind were either something in the pericardial space or just outside the pericardial space. So if it was in the pericardial space, was this fluid? Was this coagulated blood? Was this pus? This patient didn't look particularly sick except for the tachypnea, so that didn't really make sense. And I didn't see any signs of tamponade, so I didn't think that this was a huge or complicated pericardial effusion. Additionally, as we go through the other views, both in the peristyle short and then onto the subxiphoid, we see great cardiac function and just a trace diffusion and then this extra cardiac echogenic mass that seems to be outside the heart, and I think outside the pericardium too, looking at just because I can see a little bit of fluid and then the mass right outside that. So then I thought, well, maybe it's something in the mediastinum. It could be a mediastinal mass. And in this age group, the most common thing would be the thymus. I reviewed the chest x-ray that we got just before. Lungs were clear, some signs of reactive airway disease, and no obvious or extraordinarily large thymus on the chest x-ray. Additionally, the IVC view showed no signs of elevated pressures within the IVC, making a fluid overload state, venous congestion, or obstructive process very unlikely. So we went down our typical bronchiolitis pathway. The patient got some albuterol and actually had a great response. Ended up getting a second one with complete resolution of their respiratory symptoms. But I still needed to know what this was on my echo. Was this someone I needed to refer for further imaging? So when you don't know something, you ask someone smarter than you. I contacted our pediatric cardiologist. They came down, reviewed the echo with me, looked at the patient, and confirmed that this is the thymus. I had done many pediatric echoes, but haven't had it so focal and so thick in a single area. And the cardiologist agreed with me that it did seem a little atypical, but certainly wouldn't pursue any further diagnostics with this now asymptomatic patient. I discussed all this with the parents and they felt comfortable following it up with their pediatrician.